choice, and they stayed until they died, just like Africans. I ain't know nothing about that. Now, I don't have, the, I don't corner the market on suffering. This is my only point. This suffering of plenty. Every group you go to, this is the empathy part. Everybody got a story. And so I'm just saying, we always kind of come back to these same positions over and over about things, which eclipses some other sorts of things. I'm not saying forget it, I would never say forget it. I'm just saying let's, let's change the lens over this way just a little bit for a minute to see what else we can see that contributed, contributed to it. It's been so many generations that and there was a time when a whole lot of people understood this, okay? How many, does everybody have to heal in order for there to be healing? Probably everybody wouldn't heal when they were over in Africa before they got sold by their fellows. By their fellows. Well, you know, again, you have to be careful how you frame that. Mm. You have to be extremely careful how you frame that, especially mm. with young and fertile minds. Even when you talk about the, the Ma'afa, you have to be careful how you explain it because it wasn't, a, it wasn't just the middle passage. Uh, I think um, uh, Queen Mother Moore says it best. She changed it from an offer to Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And the Holocaust is continuing. It's ongoing. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, we talk about going to heaven or hell, and we talk about that as an eternity. Well, our my offer is a Holocaust. It's ongoing. It continues to this day. So how do we put that concern next to the concerns I educate? How do we put it next to it? Yes, sir. Well, I've been trying to get it. <laughs> is undermining everything he does. And you've got 37, 30, uh, 37 congressmen who are writing letters to oppose what he says, which is treason. 47, I'm sorry. Yeah, 47 treasonous. See, None who have been charged. That point right back and then, to the master narrative. And, 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 then when you talk about, and then when you talk about what he just talked about in terms of measuring brain mass, you go back to what, you know, to the research that Neely Fuller had done long before and, and Franz Fanon had done long before you know, these, these new studies that are coming out that we disregarded and we just take to consideration of. So, again, we have to have these discussions on a more cont 
continual basis, and they all have to be connected so that we can see the connection between um, the the Holocaust and and the and the and the and the forced oppression that we've suffered as a consequence. Yes, ma'am. Well, two things. One, I moved here to Mississippi in 1998 from California. From California. Um, and. I had an experience in Mexico where I was talking to kids and they said, what's the native food of California? And I said, um, tacos, enchiladas, rice and beans. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, we used to be Mexico. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I mean, this is something that needs to go around is a lot of these kinds of conversations mm -hmm. to the multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. But the, one of the mi ministers of, um, oh my God, I, I, my old lady brain. <laughs> it's the guy who um, apartheid. He was. No. Um, Mandela. Mandela. <laughs> I told you it was terrible. But one of his ministers, when he was in prison, was brought to Mississippi to try to begin the conversations um, across race. And he came to Galloway Church. And he was supposed to be here for five years. His name was Ross Ulamir. And. He gave up after three and a half years because he said Mississippians are willfully ignorant. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to know. And this speaks to the empathy and trying to understand what's going on. And what's going on is the rhetorical things that are happening through this master narrative that you're talking about. Whiteness is a construction. They can be deconstructed. Surely. All of these things can be talked about and kind of the myth can fall apart. What happens is we buy into that myth and we start fighting it and railing against it. And as people, if we can't talk to each other, then we are part of the problem. Mm -hmm. well. and, and here we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, but there's a book by Krista Ratcliffe, and it talks about the rhetorical construction of whiteness and how to learn to listen to each other uh, um, across difference, and, um, which is another book that mm -hmm. I and, would suggest and for me. Ten years back, in many places, you would have had that person come to campus and talk. Uh, I, I am so grateful that you've stayed this long, because I know how it works. Um, and But the teacher in me says, I got to at least suggest some books, even if you don't read them. Uh, at the hands of persons unknown and driven out, I want to say in particular, are written for the lay reader, so they're not all technical and, and footnoty. They have footnotes, but <laughs> you can get, especially at the hands of persons unknown. It's a very comprehensive, and I would say good, overview of lynching, but it's only about black America, as you can see. And this one is about Native American, it says Chinese, but it's also about Ameri um, Mexicans and um, Native Americans. Making of whiteness, a little bit more technical, but it is all about the spectacle lynchings, um, where you know tens of thousands of people come and, and, and the souvenir photographs and the body parts and the whole nine yards comes out of the, the lynching of Sam Hose is one of the big chapters in here. So if any part of this is of any interest to you, I would suggest you start with um, these because they're really accessible books. Uh, I couldn't help that. Uh, I really want to end, if, if possible, with a comment from a student, if that's possible. I see so many of you back there, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm assuming somebody made you come. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> Who else? They shook their heads no. Oh, no. Oh, look at that. So um, if, if there's any input you have, no pressure, just saying. you got to get in with these older people and just get in there and say something. Well, and, then, and then you can go home. I'm not a student, no. but I'm not far from it. You know, I don't know, but I would just like to offer a 21st century perspective in this. And this idea of multiculturalism and these ideas that we're kind of going back and forth with, with regards
Yeah. How? Um, I guess the problem is that we're thinking, we're learning all of this stuff. We're thinking in new ways, and I'm learning about my Africanness and as an African Americanist. But still, at the same time, when I leave, it's still not marketable. Or when I leave, the policies are still white hetero patriarchal policies. So like, there's this gap. I guess, and I don't know how to fill the gap between me being a creative uh, think tank and me making money, I guess, or being marketable. And I, I feel like I have to choose um, which one to do. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know that you have to choose, but I would say there's some periods probably you gotta focus on making the money over to think it goes ahead. But I would say that part of the way I would reframe that is, and I, I hear this all the time from students, well, why did you come to college? Because I want to get a good job and make a lot of money. Good luck with that. Call it your girl. I mean, yeah. uh, but, and so, I, I think it has to do with what you think thinking is about. I mean, it, 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 you gotta take that off the table. Here I come with that again. For a second, because you, there, are a lot of, I, there are a lot of fires to put out here. And, one of them is, is work and supporting yourself, and the other one is having a life and a mind. And keeping your mind alive, and keeping your interests up so that, so that you never stop growing and becoming. If you don't, then you become grist for the mill. And you know, I said earlier that there were three institutions that shape everything about this master narrative, and that's education, government, and the church. I would add to that, probably in this century, would be, um, the digital world, the digiverse, right? That instead of people figuring out who they are and what it all means from their families and their communities, they're getting it from the web. And that's a commercial practice, period. I mean, so when you Google something, the thing that comes up to the top comes up to the top, either because they paid to be there or because everybody Googled it and that's why it's at the top, which is almost the same thing. Not because that's the truth, okay? And so, everything is for sale, including that truth. You may not be able to reverse it, okay? I, this, this is part of what I meant about taking it off the table. You can't reverse the damage that has been done, but you can think in new ways to liberate yourself from the pain of that. Jesus died on the cross so we wouldn't have to. You don't have to keep suffering it. You can think of new ways to liberate yourself, to rise above it, without negating it, is my only point. Or you cannot. But that's, to me, what learning and thinking is all about, is how am I gonna free myself to be the most productive, happy? Let's put happy back on the table. We have lost that. Unless you come over here.
number two. Please. How long Please. does <laughs> traumatic experience last? A lifetime or a few generations? Mm. Can, you, can you say that last? Hmm. Yeah. How long does a traumatic experience last? A lifetime or a few generations? That's a good question. And the past one we can talk about that next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all come.